So in modern RF engineering, um, port parameters uh, in terms of the impedance parameters aren't really used all that frequently. Um, it's kind of a holdover from older analysis techniques. However, there are port parameters that do find pretty modern applications. And the first of these that we're going to discuss is called the A, B, C, D parameters, which are also known as the chain parameters, the cascade parameters, or the transmission line parameters, depending on you depending on who you ask. And they're based on a, again, on voltage and current relationships in a two-port network, just like the transmission line parameters were, but it's a little bit different. Uh, the um, I've written the transmission line parameter notation here for you on the, on the slide. I provided that for you. And um, just to test your matrix math skills, you should know that this is the equivalent of writing V1 equals A times V2 plus B times I2, and I1 is equal to C times V2 plus D times I2. So when we were looking at impedance parameters, we saw that impedance parameters uh, related voltages to currents, and the transmission line parameters relate port 1 to port 2 voltage and current. So it's a little bit different, right? So these individual parameters therefore represent ratios of the voltage or the current at port 1 with the voltage or current at port 2. And here we've got the relationship between the current at port 1 to the voltage and current at port 2. So it's relating between ports, right? So let's look at them individually. A here is going to be the ratio of the voltage at port 1 to the voltage at port 2 when there's an open circuit at port 2, meaning I2 goes to 0. So A is equal to the ratio of voltage at 1 to the voltage at 2 when there's no current flow in uh, port 2, when, uh, when I2 is equal to 0. Um, B is the ratio of voltage at port 1 to the current at port 2 when there's a short circuit at port 2, meaning V2 is equal to 0. So we just needed A to drop out. So if V2 is 0, A drops out of that equation, and it's V1 divided by I2. So that takes care of this top equation. Let's look at the second equation. So that gives us C and D. So for C, we see that it is the ratio of I1 to V2 when I2 is equal to 0. So under an open circuit condition, no current flow there. And then D is equal to the ratio of I1 to I2 under the condition that V2 is equal to 0. So under a short circuit at port 2. So to better understand the uh, derivation of these port parameters, I think it's instructive to perform an example. So I've got a series impedance here. It can be real complex, but it's just it's in series with the output and input ports. And we want to determine, determine the ABCD parameters of the transmission line parameters of this series impedance. And to start with, I've just summarized what we learned from the last slide, that A is equal to V1 over V2 when I2 is 0. Uh, B is V1 to I2 when uh, V2 is 0 here, meaning a short circuit. Uh, C is the ratio of I1 to V2 when there's an open circuit on port 2, and D is the ratio of I1 to I2 when there's a short circuit on uh, port, uh, port 2 there. So let's start doing that math there. So let's start with A. I'm going to redraw the circuit where um, we want to know what the ratio of V1 to V2 is when there's no current flow in I2. So let's imagine we've got some sort of signal here. It is connected to our series impedance Z, we've got this output voltage here. I2 is zero. That means there's no current flow 
in this port. No current can flow in this circuit if we just leave it under the open circuit condition. So this is our figure. And V2, therefore, is the open circuit terminal voltage there. So um, if no current is flowing in this circuit, I2 is equal to 0. That means there's no voltage drop across this element right here. Therefore, in this circuit, V1 has to equal V2. There's no voltage drop because there's no current flow. So A, which is V1 over V2, is just equal to V1 over V1 is just equal to 1. So that's the answer for the transmission line parameter A. Let's now look at B. So if we scroll back up here, B is V1 divided by I2 when there's a short on port 2. So we just take this guy here and we redraw it as our impedance. Now instead of an open circuit, we've got a short circuit. So we can see that V2 in this case is equal to 0. There's no voltage drop across a short circuited element. And what we need to calculate for B is the ratio of V1 to I2 under this condition. So I2 again is this current right here. So the current I2 clearly has to be the same as the current I1 in this network. And so the current is just going to be um, V1, that's this voltage right here, is equal to I1 times Z. Since I1 is equal to I2 in this case, V1 is equal to I2 times Z, which says that the ratio of V1 to I2 is equal to Z. And so that gives us our value for our B parameter. Parameter C, we've got the same situation as we did uh, here because we need a open circuit on I2 on output port 2 right there. So since we're down here, I'll just redraw it. So we've got this circuit right there, and we want to know the ratio of I1 to V2 when I2 is equal to 0. So um, I in this circuit, there can't be any current flow. So I1 is equal to 0. So C, by definition, has to equal 0 right there. So that solves for C. And then D, we want to know the ratio of I1 to I2 when V2 is equal to 0, which is the short circuit condition. That's this figure again. And so this is the this is the equation that we've got, or the circuit that we've got. And so we see from the circuit I1 is equal to I2, so therefore D has to equal 1. And so we can then write our transmission line parameters for this circuit. as 1, Z, 0, and 1.